fire resistant podcast. And Alan talking about movies. They may be best friends, but they always disagree. Fire resistant podcast. And Alan, I seen that. All right, so Aaron, I've met you on Twitch a few weeks ago. You and your buddy yep. Fred you've been streaming on there for how long? Have you guys been on Twitch? Oh, we are coming up. I think should be ten months now on Twitch. Okay, and uh, you guys stream together multiple times a week, and mostly you just kind of sit and talk with chat about uh, stuff about the Bible. Asking a pastor, you you're both sort of pastors. Yeah, right? that's fair, but not like real pastors, not like actual pastors. Well, uh, technically, I'm the <laughs> associate pastor at the church that that I go to, and and Fred runs a ministry at the prison. I mean, as far as like credential wise, no, yeah, but That's uh, right. like a role in your life is 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 it is what it is, you know? Yeah, but no, it's it, I love hanging out in your guys' stream. I love talking with you guys. It's been a lot of fun. I think you like irritating Fred a lot more than ah, you like just hanging. With you. I don't like irritating Fred. It just happens. <laughs> And it's not my it fault. It does. And one of the things we, we, you know, I don't know if you want to talk about it here, but like one of the things, I don't know if you got it, but Fred, okay, Fred, it, like if you can see me, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm yeah, pointing at you. Yeah, I'm pointing at you. you. Yeah. I'm saying Fred has only been on the internet for like nine months. So he doesn't <laughs> get all of it. He doesn't, he, you know, he's Fred. You know, you, you've yeah. been around him for two weeks now, but like I sit there and tell him like, bro, you know, you heard me tell him about, you know, when we first had our, our one deal where it's just like I was telling him something and like it just doesn't register just because he's such a he's so set in his ways. He can't comprehend that the, the bigger world out there, yeah. but I'll get him. I'll get him there. I'll get him. There. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's definitely it's definitely a good time. Definitely. We're checking out. You can follow him on yeah. Twitch. Uh, fire resistant podcast, right? Is it podcast on there? I uh, know it's at underscore fire resistant for both Twitch and Twitter. Uh, for for Twitter and, and Instagram. Uh, if you're going on Twitch to find us, it's the full Fire Resistant yeah. Podcast. Yeah. And right now, we've streamed so much that if you type in, I think, Fire RE, it, we're the number one thing that pops up. Cool. Well, we had a disagreement. You got really upset with Taylor mostly, but you also got frustrated with me to the point people <laughs> in your chat said you're not allowed to talk about it anymore. Yeah. So I figured we might as well put it to bed last okay. last time. Since this isn't even on your stream, you shouldn't make anyone upset. I believe it's Snow right. Katrina, right? She's the one who got the most upset. No, every, you know, Fred gets irritated and with Fred, me about right. it. But yeah. uh, I, you got mad with Taylor, which rightfully so. He said that X Men Three: The Last Stand is better than X Men Two, which is crazy. That's a terrible <laughs> opinion. He's a dumb person. He's probably even going to forget <laughs> that he said that when we come to do our ranking video he'll probably put it at the bottom right but he did say it and i didn't True. believe you i didn't believe it when you told me he said it i had to go back and re-listen and you're right he's not a smart guy but you got upset with me because i said x-men one is better than x-men two which i still stand by right so so can we can we can we put when you say upset with you, can we can we put that in in funniness upset and not actually? I'm like He's really mad at you over a movie. So angry, so angry <laughs> that my Wolverine, my Wolverine claws came out. And I tore up my desk. <laughs> he hasn't like, been able he? hasn't been able to sleep for three weeks ever <laughs> since I said it. He's been so stressed about it. So what you want to? Are we are we going to throw down about the two movies right now? Is that what's going on? Yeah. Well, what's your okay. so? From my understanding, you say X Men Two is better than X Men One, right? Solely on Nightcrawler. Well, not solely on Nightcrawler. What, what my comment to you was that uh, the Nightcrawler scene mm -hmm. in X Two was better than X Men One. Now, now when you, when I make that statement, I'm not saying that X Men One is a bad movie yeah. by any means. Okay, I I thoroughly enjoyed X Men when it came out. And I thoroughly enjoyed X Men Two. But when you compare the two, I just think that X2 is just superior all around. See, I, I think I think it's a better made movie. I'll give you that. Okay. I think it's shot better. I think the action's better. That Nightcrawler it's scene is one of the best, at least in that original trilogy. But the themes, the story is so similar to X-Men 1. It's like, 
it just feels like a copy. It's just like, let's just do what was successful the first time and do it again. Because I watched them back to back. And so I was like, oh, this again, this, you know, <laughs> there's not a lot of, um, the X-Men doesn't have a lot of room to explore because it's right. kind of got, you know, the outcast and Magneto wants to kill everyone else, right? That's like their <laughs> only well, when you say it's just like When you say it's just like the first one, mm-hmm. so what part of Stryker's arc was just like the first movie? Um, let's see. Stryker, so in the second one, Stryker comes in and attacks the school, right? Right. But Stryker's not really the antagonist. Magneto's the antagonist. Well, they both are. Stryker's just a distraction. He's more of a red herring than anything else. Uh, well, the only reason that uh, that Magneto becomes uh, the main bad guy toward the end is because uh, he was he was launched out of the prison. So if you remove that getting taken out of prison, then Stryker would have been the overall bad guy. Well, I agree. They should have not used Magneto again. Right. It, w- it was only when Magneto got access to Cerebro that he became the secondary bad guy i would say he was the ultimate bad guy in all three okay. in all in the one two and three it was kind of his yeah it's always been about him he's there's just been other distractions around it well the x-men movie or the x-men series to me has always been whether it's comic books or a cartoon series or the movies it's always been the friendship between slash hateful portion of it between charles and uh, Magneto yes. and Eric. So, and that even translates into first class and days of future past. And uh, I can't remember apocalypse cause I hated that movie so much. <laughs> uh, and I've only seen it once, but it's always been, if you, when you look at the entire series, it's always been their friendship. Yeah. I would say, I would agree with you that that's the most compelling part, especially in the, the younger yeah. trilogy, the yeah. first class trilogy, but they mm-hmm. try to make it about mystique. They try to make Jennifer right. Lawrence a star, and which just muddies everything up. Yeah, but because the, she, she can't carry that franchise by herself. No, but um, the first trilogy it, is f- so focused on Wolverine because yeah. he's kind of the most interesting character. But the heart is between Professor X and Magneto, which is why he keeps coming back as the main villain. Which is why it feels right. rehashed between the second and between the third. I would say it's more rehashed, in my opinion, between the first and the third, uh, because Stryker was thrown in there. Yeah. Um, because the the whole reason everything, the whole reason that X two happened was because of Stryker. He was manipulating um, Nightcrawler. Uh-huh. He was manipulating a lot of the mutants to do what they were going to do, which resulted in the president saying, "Go get those mutants out of that school." Yeah. Which ultimately resulted in what it what it did so if striker wouldn't have done what he did then magneto ultimately would have gotten out of jail because that's what mystique was trying to do yeah but but magneto using cerebro as a weapon against the humans again he got the idea from striker um that all that would have never happened so yeah. the, the the story driven person the bad guy uh you know because i recognize that the two bad guys of course the you know the primary bad guy striker because yeah. X2 yeah, which, is his responsibility. It's, yeah, it, I mean, that's a fair point. I, I still enjoy number one more. I think the relationship between Logan and Rogue is really strong in that one and seeing the origin, kind of the start of everything, being like mm-hmm. everything's kind of fresh, I think is better. Um, X2 is not bad, but even still, one and two are kind of middle of the pack for all the X-Men movies for me. Right. Well, for me, like I, I never, I'm not an Anna Paquin fan by any means. Mm. So X2 had a lot less of her. Yeah. So for me, that was a, that was a, that was a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and then what in days of future past and they get rid of her. They, they so, use cat. They use cat instead of her, unless you saw like the rogue cut. Yeah. So the, the last one that I, I, I so I just watched the rogue cut, um, mm-hmm. a couple weeks ago and I had a hard time telling difference between the theatrical cut but she was in the road cut obviously right i, I don't remember well, if she wasn't in the theatrical cut well the reason why they called the road cut is because in the theatrical release of the film uh rogue was never in the movie okay. except for maybe at the very end when logan's walking through the hallway and he sees her and ice man 
giving each other the the lovey dovey eyes. Yeah. Um, but it's but you know in the rogue cut the reason why it's called the rogue cut is because she comes they, and takes Cat's powers. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. They go and rescue her from this uh, from what is it the Sentinel place? I've only seen it once. She was in the Cerebro. They're keeping. They're oh, okay. Her in there. That's yeah. what it was. Okay. That's why yeah, I, I couldn't remember fully, but. But yeah, I mean, um, and other reasons is uh, that X2 is better is you got to see the full power of Professor X because even though he's not my favorite mutant, uh, he's definitely the most interesting of most of them. I mean, w- one of the best scenes, in, in my opinion, of the entire franchise is when um, Iceman and um, Pyro... Yeah, when, uh, in the museum. You know, they, right, when, when, that, when that takes place... And Professor X just stops everybody. Yeah. Like everybody just stops in their tracks and it's all, that's how powerful he is. Just, psh, just yeah. shut everybody down. Yeah. I, there's not a lot to say that I think is better in X-Men one versus X-Men two. They're pretty comparable to me. Right. 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 It just felt watching the first one into the second one. It just felt like I was watching the same thing over. So I was just like, uh, yeah, I prefer the well, first one. It, Right, and and it could be just the fact that you know I saw X Men when it was in theaters like day one, uh-huh. and then you know there's probably years. I think there was a couple of years between X Men one and X Men two, so I had an I had a years to process, you know them, and then just it's just always been X two over X one. Yeah, like the original the original one for me is you know X two X one huge gap X three. X three is terrible. Yeah, it's I don't a, even know what they were thinking. I have no idea what they were thinking. Well, it was um, a new director. It was uh, Brett, Brett no, Ratner. Brett Ratner, yeah, yeah. And he just, I don't. But but did he help write the movie? That's the problem. Is I don't remember because you know you can you can blame Brett Ratner mm-hmm. for the direction of the movie, but if the story sucks, there's nothing you really can do about it. Yes and no, I guess. Like it's it's hard. I think the director has a lot of say. It depending on it's really the studios that kind of drive all that, you know. They're like, This is we need well, ever, more X Men, we need to see more well, powers. Did you, did you ever see, well, did you ever see um, Cop Out? No, with Bruce Willis That's and Tracy good. Morgan, yeah. So, if you've have you seen any of Kevin Smith movies, um, yeah, like Clerks, Clerks, Mall Rats, Chasing Amy, Dogma, Jay and Sam Bob Strike Back. Clerks too, so on and so forth. I've seen a couple. So of you them. Have, I haven't seen all of them, right? You, so you have all these, and they're all, um, they're all crass. They're rated R. They're 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 Kevin Smith movies, right? Yeah. Well, then you have this movie right in the middle of the pack called Cop Out. He didn't write, nor did he have any say so in the the writing of the movie, and it was just a complete mess. It, and the movie failed at the box office for one. It just wasn't a good movie, but two, I mean, it just wasn't, it wasn't a Kevin Smith movie. It was a movie directed by Kevin Smith that just had kind of like the, you know, he doesn't really have a directing style because it's all in his, the, uh, the dialogue of his characters. So it's just, it's just a Kevin Smith movie. Well, Bruce Willis is also terrible. Yeah. If you ever listen to him talk about Bruce Willis, it's wasn't, it's not the, wasn't the most pleasant (laughs) experience for Kevin Smith. Uh, directing um bruce willis yeah but i'm looking on here to see i'm looking on imdb and so again i don't want to make excuses because i hated the movie anyways but brett radner directed the movie and yeah. some guy named Seth, simon kenberg and zach penn wrote the movie so he didn't have any like creative outside of directing the movie say so in the story yeah yeah well i mean if you're if you understand the material as a director mm-hmm. i think you can guide the the story more you know what i'm saying like it, right. he could be like no this we're not doing this this doesn't make sense this isn't but it's being forced on from the studio by other people who don't seem to really know the comics to someone who doesn't seem to care <laughs> you know like it's right. just there's just so many layers of people who don't appreciate the source material which i don't that doesn't really bother me so much as long as the story is interesting i don't care if there's right. a departure from you know, like Infinity War, right? In the right. comics, Thanos was doing it all for death, like trying to you know, death the character. He's trying right. to, you know, do this impressor. impressor. You don't necessarily need that. It makes it, it, it gives a little bit more clarity to his motivation, but you don't need the character just to fit with the comics. Like, 
it's fine to cut stuff out and change it and make it fresh and make it make more sense on screen, but it has to be good if you're going to you right. know, take away from the source material. If the original source material is better and you don't use it, then you're just being dumb. True. You're just shooting yourself in the foot for no reason. Well, and, and the X-Men movies, I mean, the, you know, they're produced by Fox. And if you do any sort of research or if you know anything about Fox, uh, they have their hands in everything. So they, a lot of times they want to see dailies. And if they don't like the way the dailies are going, they'll start making moves mm-hmm. early on in the film. I'm trying to. I'm looking it up now. I can't remember the name of the film, but there was a Vin Diesel movie where the director came out like uh, right before the movie came out and said, "This is not my movie. Fox screwed it up. Don't go see it." Like, <laughs> when did you ever? What would you ever hear <laughs> of a director doing that? Uh, the, the name's off the top of my top of my lips here. Let me find it here. Vin Diesel. Yeah, Babylon AD. Like if you if you oh, Google yeah. Babylon AD and director, you'll probably find all of the the quotes from him saying that Fox screwed up my movie and don't go see it because this isn't my movie. Yeah, <laughs> that's so. I probably uh, didn't do a lot more work since then. I'm sorry. I said that guy probably didn't do a lot more work since that. Point. Well, let's see. I'm, I'm I'm clicking him. He did he did uh, Amelie, which is highly regarded. I don't know if that was before or after. Um, Babylon AD, but he looks like he's been consistently working. Yeah, he's got stuff coming out in 2019. But ultimately, it, my point was is, is you know this could have been a Fox thing, like you were saying, where yeah. they went to the writers and they're like, hey, let's see how many mutants we can put in the movie, and oh yeah, we need to use Ian McKellen because he's well, Patrick Stewart's it, best friend right now. And then they're like, let's throw in the Dark Phoenix because that's the most popular storyline from X Men. But right. It was like a the end of a trilogy. I don't think they had any intention of continuing after this point. Right. Um X-Men Wol- Origins came out before 3, but I don't know if they had intention of doing Wolverine after. Like it's just kind of they're like let's just tie it all up. Let's just use everything we got and throw it all at the wall and hope it, you know, sticks. And it just was I wonder, a mess. I want to say the movie made a lot of money, but it just wasn't good. Yeah. Yeah, um, I think I think it did well, but uh right. Well, for, for, but but I know you guys talked about it on your podcast already, but I, and I don't want to rehash too much. But I mean, when you look at uh, and I don't know how much you know about Dark Phoenix, but when you look at that, that character, you know, she is like a cosmic being and they reduced her down to an angry. I don't know. I don't like I, I don't know what they were what they were shooting for in it. Yeah. And uh, it would have probably taken a lot of story or a lot of time to maybe tell that story of what the Phoenix actually was. But then you could take out Magneto. Like if you were taking him yeah. out and all, all the stuff in the forest, then you could have used that for exposition toward the character, I guess. Yeah. But um, I just don't know. I, I don't. I don't understand what they were doing with with the whole Phoenix thing in in X three or from what I can tell from a Apocalypse. was it Dark Phoenix or whatever it's gonna be called. Yeah, Dark Phoenix. Well, no way. The new movie coming out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, forcing Magneto into all these movies just kind of hurts it like i i really like ian mckeller and i really like um uh michael fassbender as magneto yeah but uh constantly forcing him in just because he's one of the characters doesn't work because he's the villain like it works better in first class because he's buddied up with professor x right but in x2 and 3 bringing him back every time just feels over like too much because villains should go away. You can have your main cast of heroes who obviously stay together because they're friends right. and they live together, but bringing someone who hates them back in, it just, it, 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 it just feels stale. It feels forced. It doesn't feel logical for a storyline. Like, well for, well, for me, um, Magneto is my favorite villain uh, in the Marvel universe by far. So I have no problem with them using him. In fact, I, I, I like Michael Fassbender a lot more than I like Ian McKellen. Yeah, I think I think they did a good job of, of making you feel sorry for him. Uh, even though I did not like Apocalypse, I think the most compelling scene in the entire film was when the guy shot his daughter with the arrow, mm-hmm. and you just Michael Fassbender is such a great actor, and just yeah. him just killing everybody with her necklace was just crazy yeah well that that's michael fassbender is the best part of apocalypse he's only like that's about it like right he was so good in that 
Um, well, for me, he's he's the best part of the entire first class series. I, I, I don't. I don't think he's had a bad. I don't think he's done a bad job. No, no, not at all. I, I like James McAvoy. I think James McAvoy mm-hmm. did a really good job. His story arc gets a little goofy in this uh, Days of Future Past when he becomes kind yeah. of a hippie, which is fine. But it's the the turnaround is like almost too fast. Right. He, he just decides like you know what? No, I'm done with this, and then goes right into being professor again. And it was just like yeah. a goofy thing. But anyways, I think. We're never gonna agree about X Men because I don't, I don't care enough to actually care. <laughs> well, I, we, just like a, we just had like a twenty minute or thirty minute conversation <laughs> on it, and just, just all you got to do is say, you know what, Fire Resistant Podcast, or if you want to call me Aaron, be like, you know what, you're right, you're way older than me, so I should just let the wisdom flow through me. And X Two is just a better all around movie. That's fair. I should have said you're you're way older than me. <laughs> your opinions you know are formed by your softer brain yeah like things and also i mean slippery you're missing form. you're missing the entire character in x1 that made x2 so great and that's pyro i mean who wants to sit there and watch a kid constantly flick open his <laughs> his ladder just constantly fling fling oh yeah man. but anyways the main reason we're here today not yes. about x-men but about jigsaw yes the eighth Seventh, eighth, eighth movie. It's eighth. It is the eighth movie. Yes, in the Saw franchise. Yes, and this movie is crazy. It is the whole series is crazy, and I I love it. It's terrible. The writing's bad. The acting's awful half the time, yes. and the twist never makes sense after the third movie. It's just like you can't you can't follow what's going on. Um, partly because two of the actors looked almost identical to me and i had a hard time keeping them separate in my head while watching the movies right but uh this movie takes off 10 years after the last movie which so it's um uh, who cares about spoilers if you you shouldn't listen to this if you care about spoilers right. for the saw movie this is a prequel and a sequel to <laughs> the same the series <laughs> everything <laughs> it, it it has a time hop of before this is his very first uh very first what do you call it a game yeah yeah so so here's here, here's the thing though i've seen all the saw movies yeah. and I, I liked i liked all of them except for the first one right and what the saw movies have done very well in my opinion mm-hmm. is is story build. So each movie compounds on top of the other. Yeah. And, you know, let, let's say, let's just, I don't know the exact number, but let's say all the first saws take place in like basically like a week. Yeah. Okay. Because of the fact that each story just shows you more and more of what Jigsaw's ultimate plan was. Yeah. So when I was going into this movie, I almost immediately knew that the game that was being played was not the same game that was going on. Mm. that we were watching yeah, yeah, yeah and what i was trying to figure out is why or how did he preserve the bodies for 10 years <laughs> but then of course we found out why but but for me like uh the the, the formula has become stale yeah with with this because they want to try and give you like a twist but it just seemed like it was you know what uh saw seven came out in 2010 and Jigsaw came out in 2017, and and it still seemed like it was just the, the same old, same old. Yeah. There was there was nothing about this movie that made it different from all the rest. Yeah, no, it, even the traps. The traps are always something yeah. that kind of um, each one. You go got, to see the traps. Yeah, and this one was just kind of the same. Like none of it felt. I'm trying to think. There was one moment I think when he was trying to reach in and grab the. Uh, tape recorder when the guy's yeah. leg was strapped down with the cables was kind of the only moment I was like nervous <laughs> and I think I was more anxious about when he had the rake in there because I was like oh what's going to happen you know what what happens when the trap gets set off because clearly right. something was going to happen and that even that was like the most anxious I was from any of the traps there's something I don't know I the the actual murder and disembodiment. I think they set it up bad with the saw blades when they all cut themselves intentionally. Yeah, which did, made no sense. 
it didn't hurt him. Like the one girl, her whole back hit it and she was just like, mm-hmm. fine. That would snap your, your spinal cord right in half. Like there's just, just all right through it. Yeah. Yeah. There's just nothing. You would not be just like, oh, that hurt. You know, like that would be devastating. It's a wound. <laughs> because <laughs> those saws, once they hit you, they grab yeah. you and they pull you in. It'll just eat you up. Like you cannot just, maybe with your finger. The, the guy who did that, I got, I could follow that, but everyone else is like, no, this would be way more damaging. Right. For, for me, like the first, through the first few traps, because I don't know about you, whenever I see an actress that I recognize, but I don't remember who she is, mm-hmm. I, I spend a little bit of time before I go to IMDb to, fi- to see who she was. Yeah. And I'm trying to figure out Laura Vandercoot. Like, you mm-hmm. know, I know her name now because I looked it up, but I was like, where have I seen her before? <laughs> I kept thinking, I was like, oh man, what have I seen her before? What have I seen her before? And same way with the the main cop, the one that they made you think was the jigsaw, but then of course, yeah. you know, spoilers, uh, he was the guy, he was the main guy that they were going for. Like even him, I was like, where have I seen that guy before? And it, and with Laura Vandercoot, there was like a moment where I was like, oh yeah, she was Supergirl in Smallville. Yeah. And then um, with uh, the main detective, it, I actually made myself mad because he played Dodd in Memento, which is my favorite movie of all time. So I was like, where have I seen this guy before? And when I looked it up, I was like, he was Dodd. I mean, like as soon as I saw Memento, I was like, oh yeah, he was Dodd. Yeah. So, but, but yeah. Yeah. The, um, so let, let's go through trap by trap. So you got the okay. bucket, bucket head trap first, right? What did you think of that one? The bucket head? Yeah, oh, so I'm they sorry, had to... never, mind, never, mind, never mind, never mind. Yeah, yeah. For me, like, uh, you knew that probably one of them was going, like, you know, when you watch this type of movie, they start out with four. You know, with each trap, they're going to get rid of another person. Yeah. So, like, you know, huh? <laughs> yeah, that's kind of, I, I feel the same way. I, I was like, okay, yeah. someone's going to die. And as soon as you started seeing them cut themselves, the guy who's still on the ground, who turns out yeah. to be the uh, mortician who is now jigsaw which i i didn't really like the idea of him taking over i know they've done that a few times but this felt more like you no know, jigsaw is actually done and now we have a new a new person right um, well the thing about him the thing about him though was the difference between him and all the rest of the people yeah. was he did nothing bad it was a mistake on Jigsaw since that was, I guess, his first game. Yeah. So his first game, he made a mistake. Yeah. Which yeah. I liked and I didn't like all at the same time. I didn't like how quickly Jigsaw changed his mind. He's like, oh, sorry. He like runs in there as soon as the guy gets cut. And he's like, <laughs> you don't deserve to die for a mistake. But I did like the idea of like, w- because of you, I'm not going to do this for revenge. I'm, that's not going to be a factor in all my traps and all my stuff. Like you see where he gets his morality in quotes, <laughs> uh, for right, right. how he does everything, you know, it's like, Oh no, this is not fair for me to do this to you because you just made a mistake. I like, I like that aspect. I didn't like the way they did it, but the, the idea of it I thought was good. Yeah. But uh, yeah. So I mean, the, I, mean, I mean, the trap was all right, you know, just because you knew, like I said, with every room, they're going to get rid of, they're going to get rid of somebody. Yeah. Uh, the trap is all right. Yeah. I mean, I, I didn't understand unless I guess Jigsaw was watching the entire time. So as soon as they, they, they put their finger or got their arm cut or something, yeah. then, um, you know, I think to me, me personally, and maybe this is a morbid part of me, but like, I think it would have been more, um, compelling if they actually had to lose a body part. So if one, had to cut off his arm because of what he did in a, you know, to get himself there. If the girl had to cut her finger, you know, part of her hand yeah, yeah. off because she stole from the lady that ended up dying, yeah. you know, something to that effect. Whereas, you know, one, what one person cut their finger, one cut their arm, the girl got her back cut. I mean, you know, yeah. And it didn't take a lot of blood. It was just, right. you just needed a little paper cut and that was it. I wonder if yeah. you could have just like bit your finger and just the blood coming out would have been enough. Would that, would that have sufficed his his rules? Because it was just he wanted bloodshed. He didn't say right. you have to touch the uh, saw blades. That could be correct. I mean, because he did put the keys in the gun. Spoilers for later on. Yeah. So I mean, he you didn't have to kill somebody. You could have just not done it and left. Yeah. So, also, 
if I was in there, I would run towards the saw blades and try to get the chain into the saw blades. That was another thing too. <laughs> Cause it, thing. it's either going to cut the chain or you're going to take off the teeth. Like, right. There's no, there, there's, you, you don't get to rub something together that quickly without doing damage to one or the other. And so you're either going to snap the chain in half and be free, or you're going to take away what's really dangerous about the saw blades in, I guess, end up getting choked to death against the wall. <laughs> so maybe, right. not, maybe not the best plan, but at least a plan better than what any of those people seem to have. True. But yeah, so we get the four characters come through. You have, uh, was it four or five? How many people did you start out with? There was five people that started out because you had the, the, the two young kids. You are three, three young kids and the older guy. Yeah. The guy that was supposed to be the guy that when he died, you were happy that he died. And so they come through the doors, they get the buckets off, but they still have the chain around their neck or they have like a collar with the chain connected to them. And this is kind of where it starts to fall apart for me logically because how did Jigsaw know that the blonde girl was going to make it through? Because this next trap was pretty dependent on her. But how would he know that she was going to make it? Because he saw the script, man. Oh, He's, yeah. He saw the script and he's like, oh, she's going to make it. Got to put that on there. Because I, I want to say, I haven't seen Saw 2 for so long. But mm. all the traps, none of them were character dependent. None of them required a certain character to stay alive to solve it. Right. They just fell into random traps. Mm. Which makes a lot have, which makes a lot I'm more sense. I don't remember a lot of them. Yeah. So Saw Two is the in the house with uh Don Donnie Wahlberg. His son yeah. is in the house, but there's a group yeah, of people. Yeah. And yeah, they, that's the one. That's the one, and I didn't mean to interrupt you, but that's the one uh, that actually made me cringe. There's not a lot of movies that make me cringe. <laughs> and when that when that dude picked that girl up and threw her in oh, the pit of, yeah, of yeah. needles and she was screaming as she was like raking through the needles, yeah. I was like, oh my gosh. Whoa. <laughs> man. Yeah, that, that was, was upsetting. Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, but yeah, so all those were, the traps were not dependent on their past. They were all just kind of deadly. In, right. In this one, that because this is another one with a group of people, I think two and Jigsaw are the only ones with an actual group of people in the game. You have, right. I want to say in three, the guy affects other people, but they're not playing the game. They're just sacrifices. Right. So what you're telling me is that in prior Saw's, the um, the characters drove the story, and this one, the traps drove the story. Yeah, yeah. And so it's you basically what it was yeah. So the girl, they drop down syringes, and then it says she has poison in her. One of these has an antidote. She needs to figure out what it is. Then they start getting lifted by the collars and are being mm -hmm. hung. And she bef before that happens, she says that oh three fifty three or something like that. Yeah, is the price I put on a life, which how would Jigsaw know that? Again, he opened up the script. Oh, I, I keep forgetting about that the part. Flashback. He looked at the flashback. <laughs> and he's like, "There you go." <laughs> but yeah. since we didn't get, since we didn't get a definite answer, do you think that the three dollars and fifty three cents was the antidote or was it the poison? I think it's the antidote, but. It could have been the poison, like, this is what killed her, so this is what kills you. Right. But what happens is the angry guy uh, takes all three and is yelling at her to use it because it, if she doesn't take one of them, they all die. Right. And she doesn't want to take any of them. She's panicking. She's freaking out, which, understandable, yes, illogical at the same time. Like, you're going to die if you don't do something. You might as well try something. Right. Uh, he ends up just stabbing her with all three. And <laughs> and in the future, okay, when they replay the game, she gets stabbed or the new girl gets stabbed in the exact same spot. Yes. Which <laughs> would, <laughs> I couldn't. <laughs> I, I know he, cause so 
the new Jigsaw said he was playing the game in the same way, which I thought was a creative idea. Again, not great in concept or um, what they what they actually did. The concept was cool, but the execution was kind of fell flat. Um, but he said, "I got three people, and we're the last two. But what happens to the other traps?" Like he, he was just like, eh, "That's good." You know, like there, it seemed, I don't know, it, it didn't seem to track why do it any, like, why do this, <laughs> you know? Right. And, and, you know, I don't want to skip ahead yeah. into the next trap, but that also plays into the very end between the last two of the first game, you know? Yeah. Uh, like, he had to have set more traps, right? Yeah. But yet he forewent every single one of them because she broke out the back door. Yeah. I'm not exactly sure. Yeah. Which seemed kind of unfair, right? She escaped. And then Jigsaw was like, Nope, sorry. <laughs> you don't really get to escape. And, uh, it seemed like he broke his own rules. Right. But, uh, yes. So, so, so with, with the, with the next set of traps, so would they have been stuck in that room for the rest of their life? If the, if the nasty guy hadn't, gotten Just try to go out try to go out the exit yeah i didn't understand that either so i watched the uh, uh so the blonde girl dies she gets all three needles injected in her neck and yeah. one of them's acid then they they all fall down the collars get released and now they're free the grumpy guy sees a door that says no exit and he's like i'm gonna go out that door and everyone's like don't do it clearly don't do it there's other doors right. we can try first. Let's try those. Don't go to the door that says no exit because this guy's going to try to kill us. And he's like, get away from me. Walks over, falls through the porch and gets his leg trapped in a bunch of cables. Then there's a, a tape recorder that says, play me. And it says, pull the handle and you'll be set free. And everyone knows your leg's going to get chopped off. You pull that handle. Right. And so they're like, sorry, sorry, figure it out you you got yourself into yeah. this mess he told you not to do that yeah which fair enough right like that was all his own fault right i don't think i would hang out with that guy well however like literally they say you think about this while we walk over here to this area that has a door that could shut on us yeah and then when they walk into the room what happens the door shuts yeah <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's so dumb and so they're now in a grain silo, which is pouring grain down. And it says, if he doesn't chop off his leg, they're going to die. And again, how would Jigsaw one know the grumpy guy was going to try to go out the door? Cause he's got tapes already set up. He's got it already recorded. He's got his name in it. It wasn't just like, you've made a mistake. It's you. Was the guy's name Aaron? Does that sound right? It could, it could have been. I, I want to say it was, but. He was a tool, so his name has to be Aaron. Yeah, it, it adds up consistent with all the errands that I know. <laughs> um, but he, so he, uh, it, it's just like, how would Jigsaw know exactly who was going to end up where? Because then in the silo, he also knows who's in there. I want to say he says their names too. And it's just, it's a little crazy to me. Um, the Well, the whole thing is crazy, but right, right. the their idea of him knowing exactly who's going to be where and what situation and what's going on. Well, can I ask us a, a city boy question? I mean, I don't know if you'll know the answer to this, but maybe you do. Um, so with the grain being poured in, could you not just step on the next layer of grain that was coming down? I guess. So I had the same question when a quiet place came out. I was like, it doesn't okay. seem that hard because they fall into the uh, corn silo in that and they're like right, right, sinking right. in. It doesn't seem that hard to escape, but I guess it's like a really dangerous thing that people fall in and just, it's like quicksand. You get sucked down and then you end up suffocating and people find you years later. Like, hmm. but it's, I didn't think about the, I didn't think about the, uh, the quiet place. So I guess if it's in two movies, it's true, right? Two movies. Yeah. That's all you need where two or more movies come together. The truth <laughs> is spoken. Um, so, so dude stuck in the trap. Yeah. Grain is falling. Yeah. And they're yelling at him to cut his leg off. He's not doing it. The grain gets up to their nose and then 
pitchforks start falling down, saw blades start <laughs> falling down, chef knives start falling down, and all of these things are falling perfectly straight down. Right. There's no way. These things would be Not falling on their road. falling on their sides, falling, you know, yeah. handles down first like I don't know if they've ever dropped something in their life, but that's not the way things work. Also, nails fall down and just embed into the lady's arm. Right. And uh, no, there's not enough force. Not from just the weight of a nail. Right. Like, who pitched that? Yeah. <laughs> like, let's have, let's have three nails fall out and then fall in perfect sequential, sequential order. Like, boom, boom, boom. Like, in the girl's hand and just stick there. I don't think you could do it with a nail gun from that height. Like if I was, you know, 20 feet above you with a nail gun and I shot it at you, I don't know if it would embed into you the same way. I think it would lose the momentum and these just, just dropped. Had, I think we just had our hundred sub goal. If, if we had a hundred subs, Fred's going to shoot me with <laughs> a, nail a nail gun in my hand to see if it sticks. <laughs> the, um, there, there's one chef knife that chef knife that falls into the guy's shoulder, which yeah. I, that that made sense, but that was like the only one that actually hurt them. That added yeah. up. Well, in theory, it really didn't even do anything to him in the long run because it didn't affect him while he was in the next trip that we'll talk about here in a minute. Yeah. So but- the only the only thing that affected anyone is the guy after he pulls the handle to save his friend. Well, not his friends, but the people in the silo right. gets his leg chopped off. That's the only consequence of any of these traps. I mean, other than people dying, but for right. the characters, because they're all getting abused, they're all getting hurt, they're getting dropped from the ceiling, they're getting strung up by their necks, you know, and his leg getting chopped off is the only one that actually slows anyone down. Everyone else just is fine. They get better right. instantly. You don't even notice that they've been stabbed, cut, dropped. It's, and we didn't even we talked about terrible acting. I'm gonna I'm gonna yeah. go A and D on us. Okay, we talked about terrible acting, but we didn't pinpoint the actual for me the worst actor in this entire film was the young uh, dude that got hit in the shoulder with a knife. He was by far <laughs> the worst actor in the film. And every time that he spoke, I was like, "What is it like? Did they not have better takes? Was this? Did they take? Did, did they have one take?" <laughs> Do they have maybe like two takes and they're like, yeah, that was good. This movie's going to make money regardless because it's got jigsaw in there. So let's move on. I don't, because I, I don't, I don't understand. I don't remember him specifically being the worst, but they were all really bad. They all like, the problem is with these movies, unless you're screaming, none of it is logical. Right. You know, like if this was actually happening, you would just be in a puddle, just crying and wetting yourself the entire time. Like you wouldn't be just talking normal and being like kind of buddy buddy at certain points. You'd be right. You'd be so stressed and you know terrorized. Well, the, the trauma from the first trap it would be enough to take out ninety to ninety five percent of the population because you know the fact that you're forced to inflict damage upon yourself. Yeah. That yeah. Yeah. And so I think it's hard to to track with any time they're not freaking out, but the acting is is bad. <laughs> like which my, boy, which my boy Aaron spent the entire time freaking out. The he was the only one that was freaking out the entire but time. He was freaking out in the way of like the neighborhood kids are playing on his lawn and he doesn't like it. <laughs> like he wasn't freaking out like someone's trying to murder him. He was just like, right. oh, you guys are so frustrating. Like. It was just nothing nothing felt logically consistent. You know what? You know, I said that he was like the tool, but when I think about it, you know, as we as we get you know, closer to the end of of talking about that, I just realized that he is he's probably the hero of the movie, right? Sort of he saved yeah. their lives. Yeah. He saved their lives. He he's, cut his leg off and he tried to tell the lady, and we'll get to that here in a, in a minute, but like he tried to tell the lady not to do what she did. Yeah. And if she would have not did it, then he's the hero, bro. He also Aaron's the hero. <laughs> he's always the hero. He also had the least sin, if that makes sense. His so he was kind of a wild boy in as yeah. a teenager, and he was getting drunk and like standing on the back of a convertible with his friends. And they're yelling at him like, hey, stop, stop. You're being crazy. And he falls out. 
and his friends turn around to look and then they get in a car crash like don't they die they die the two people in the car die and the person who crashed into it also died but and that that's the least sin yeah i would say so because well other than other than um the new jigsaw right who messed up you have so you have that guy aaron who fell out of a car friends died Mm -hmm. he's three people three people died right but then you have um the woman who suffocated her baby and set it up to make it look like her husband did it and then he killed himself two two birds uh, so she people died she actively murdered him or her baby and then got her husband sent to a mental institution because he went crazy then you have the lady who stole the purse watched the lady die because she had her inhaler which wouldn't have been that hard to give right back right you know like she just ran away for three dollars and 53 cents or whatever it was one life but she actively she was like culpable in the crime she did the crime that caused the death and then you had um the guy sell the busted motorcycle knowingly that the brakes didn't work who ended up getting in a car crash and dying so yeah. everyone else did something actively to cause it where he was just kind of dumb. Yeah. 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 Like more people died because of him, but he was just not paying attention. You know, like he was just making bad choices. He wasn't actively doing something wrong. Right. All right. I'll accept that answer for now. So he, he had the least, the smallest sin, you know, he was just a jerk and ended up killing people. And he kind of tried to save everyone, even though he was a jerk in the movie. So let me let me let me write us and get us back on track. Yeah. So the dude the dude pulls the lever. Yep. Leg chops off. He screams again. Yep. My boy Aaron feeling pain. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if his name was Aaron. I have to I, I have to Google it. I feel like it was, but I don't know. I'll check it real quick. I got I got it pulled up. I don't know what IMDb did to not be the number one, not to be number one on my Google list whenever I look up movies, but. Let's see here. His name was Ryan. Oh, okay. Ryan, Aaron, that's similar. Yeah, something like that. It's I mean, like generic they white name. A, they both have their they both have an A in their name. Yeah. Um. So they come out. The two people come out of the silo, and they help patch up Ryan. It feels wrong to call him Ryan now. You just call him Aaron. I, I'll just stick with Aaron. They patch up Aaron. They get his leg all tourniqueted up. And uh, from there, they see, oh, no, the, the black guy walks into a roadrunner trap or a Bugs Bunny trap, the uh, snare trap on the ground that whips mm. him upside down and pulls him up and uh, brings him over the, the Blintech, the giant Blintech, which was the, one of the worst designed traps in the series. I, still, I don't even know what it does. So the red rings are like giant blades. And so when it spins, <clears throat> you just have these spinning blades on the mm-hmm. side, not like a blender, not like chopping in the middle, but just around like a pencil sharpener. It's basically a giant pencil sharpener. And it's just lowering <laughs> him in this giant pencil sharpener. And his goal is to reach through the bottom and grab the brake to stop it. He's trying to get it, nicks himself, freaks out. The girl jumps up on top of it where the motorcycle that he sold Jigsaw's nephew that got him killed is up there running the thing. She throws a piece of rebar into the wheel, stops it. This would be, there's like, for the wheel just to stop was crazy to me. There would be so much torque on that piece of rebar. It would have either snapped right away or it would have ripped all the mounts off of that motorcycle. It would have just flipped itself over with how much energy was moving. I was like, no, this isn't okay. But what happens is the motorcycle stops. He's safe for a second. Then the re- piece of rebar snaps. Then he falls into it. Gets turned into beef jerky. I don't know if beef jerky. It's kind of like uh, sweet and sour pork. It's what he looked like. 
<laughs> That's true. I was still try- I, like, even with your explanation of it, I still don't understand the purpose of the trap. I really don't. Just because, like, I guess the blades were hot as well. I just, uh, you know, it was constantly spinning. And then why did it just shoot him out to the side? You know? Yeah. Well, because it-, it was like a, if it was like a pencil sharpener, why was, why didn't it just launch him in the air? Yeah, uh, I don't know. But I don't know where the strap went that was holding his ankle either. Yeah, it was, I, I don't know. And so, we, shouldn't try to put logic, we shouldn't try to put logic to Jigsaw. <laughs> so this whole time, every time someone dies, the next scene is their body, at least what you're supposed to think, gets revealed right. in public. And everyone's freaking out that Jigsaw is alive now. But we find out later that the guy is just recreating it. And I guess he's doing it because he can use the the recordings that Jigsaw had done for this original trap. And that's part of why he wanted to recreate it. But right. it, it's just so convoluted of an idea. I, I mean, he's it works. He ends up, you know, leading everyone astray and making them think it was someone else. But like, it's just a long process to do it, which I feel like he could have done it much easier. Also, he's going to, I assume, do another one, right? Like, I don't know if they're going to make another movie, but in the universe of Jigsaw, he's going to continue doing this, right? So putting the blame onto the detective just to do it again right. doesn't, why? <laughs> you know, like, what's, what's the purpose of going through all this effort to make it seem like it's someone else? when he's just going to do it a new one that won't seem like it was jigsaw anymore. Uh, the only thing I could think of as far as that goes is it buys him time. So when the cops come together and say it was this dude and uh, they're like, okay, it was him. Then they're not going to be looking for another jigsaw until the next time he does it. Yeah. Yeah. Right in the world. In the world of Jigsaw or Saw, the, the, he can potentially be doing four or five traps all at once. And we <laughs> only get true. to see this trap. And then in Jigsaw 3, we'll see that while this one was going on, he was doing another one just like the original Jigsaw that's uh, was a, doing. That's so much effort. Like you think about the timeline of the original Saw movies, how mm-hmm. many things he built, how many people he kidnapped how he ran everything all at the same time and kept track of everything while, you know, I think there was a trap going on while he was in that bathroom the entire time in the first movie too. Yes. Like, yes. There's, he's there's a, something going on. Yeah. So that's to me, that's what made the original saws, not the first one. Cause I really didn't like that one. But all the rest of the saws building this day or whatever was going on the time frame of the first seven Saul movies like he was just building upon building upon building I was like holy crap like all this <laughs> stuff was gone when you think of all like the the full yeah. the full jig on what he did it was it was it was insane and yeah. it was awesome I hope they just uh, keep making prequels that there's just every prequel movie every jigsaw movie is just further into the future or into the past and it's a new new thing that no one ever knew about each and every time that would be the best just go full on crazy when that lady was like there's a rumor that there was two bodies that they never found i was like how would anybody know of a rumor or how did a rumor start the exact two bodies were never found (laughs) (laughs) oh man the the stuff characters know in this doesn't make any sense there's there's a lot of things that they shouldn't have any idea but uh yeah what kind of person, and that's another side character we really haven't talked about, but this girl, the redhead, mm. I don't know her name, uh, she had every single jigsaw uh, trap. Yeah, so I think like she, she remade it. She, yeah, she remade it. It was like cosplay or um, almost like she was just a f- yeah. fan. And so she built all these things herself. And in the commentary, so she had the Blintech thing, the pencil sharpener. Yeah. Um, and I guess originally she was going to trap the new jigsaw and put them into it, but you're going to find out that the blades were actually just rubber in her version, but she was going to make him think that she was going to kill him and then just be like, psych, it's just rubber. You're never in danger. But like, could you imagine someone just doing that to you as a joke? 
Well, I was thinking a little bit, a little bit more than that. So let's say you're at a club, you're talking to this girl because she's a, she's an attractive woman, right? Yeah. And she's like, "Hey, come back over to my place," and you're like, "Cool." And you walk into the room, and then like you see all of these torture devices, and you're like, "Okay, gotta go. See you later." <laughs> What's up, Max Glaze? Okay. We're uh, we're she, talking about she had them all. Yeah, she had almost everything from all the movies, all the iconic ones at least. We're talking about Jigsaw, the number eight movie in the franchise of the Saw movies. So one of the things that I did while we were talking here is I looked up the production budget for this movie was ten million dollars. Okay, that I want to say and it made up two hundred and two at the box office. Two hundred and two is that what you said? No, one hundred and two. One hundred and two. I want to say the so first one. one was like less than a million like it was super low budget which is part yeah, the of first the, the, the first one was i can look it up here in a second one but uh yeah the first two i want to say were really really low budget that's yeah. the reason why that they did that they ran with it so fast is of course you know yeah well that's kind of how all horror movies are is uh they're all low budget because they don't have to look good the worse they look the better the atmosphere is generally you one point 1.2, yeah. Sorry. No, 1.2 million. Um, you don't have to, you don't do a lot of effects. You don't do, like, the less you see of the bad guy, the creepier it is. Like, you can get away with a lot of tricks for making it really cheap, and they they are really profitable because people like being scared. Like, right. Like, Paranormal Activity, they probably spent, like, $15 on that, and it made yeah, all like the money. Help. Yeah, it was. Would, would, it, would, it, would it make you sad to know that the first Saw movie total box office was one hundred and three million dollars? So that means Jigsaw made the almost the same exact money as <laughs> the movie from back in two thousand four made. I I have a special place in my heart for the first Saw movie. We went and saw that Halloween night with uh, hmm. it was a midnight showing of the first Saw movie. It was like. 15 one with my cousins and uh it was a good time the movie is not great but right you know it's a it was fun so i've always it's always been kind of a special one to me well it looks like they did a re-release of it that i was not aware of so in 2010 they did a re-release called saw 3d i think saw and, 3d uh, was number seven it was it yeah i'm pretty sure Okay, well then that's what it was because they I thought they had them in sequential order, but they, they they don't. You're right. Yeah. So Saw 3D was the last one. Yeah. That's weird. And they do all the 3D tricks in that one. Yeah. But uh, I so saw that. I saw that at home. So getting so the where where were we? Uh, everyone's dead except the two characters, except for Aaron and uh, Supergirl. Supergirl. Yeah. They go into the final room, which I oh no, so they she escapes. She goes out the back door and Jigsaw comes in and stabs her with a needle. She passes out. They wake up tied, strapped. Um, ankle ankle a, chain. Yeah, ankle chain. Thank you. To the wall and Jigsaw's in there taking apart a machine and says, this is your key to freedom. Puts the shell into the shotgun, leaves the shotgun in the middle. And then the girl because now the guy doesn't have a leg because he had it chopped off she gets up and grabs a shotgun and it's like i have to kill you he wants me to kill you and somehow he realizes the gun is going to go off backwards i don't know how he's the hero but how would he know how would you ever know that a gun's going to shoot backwards well possibly because the whole i mean he the whole entire game is not what you think it is. So mm-hmm. if he puts a gun in there and, and the entire purpose of the game is morality, why would he give you a gun to shoot somebody? You know, he's given you a gun. So if you pull the trigger, then you kill yourself. And then in this particular case, you also kill the other, the other person as well. Yeah. Yeah. I just don't, I don't know where the logic step would be for, right there's a gun pointing at you to say, no, it's going to shoot you instead. Like I get it in the movie. I get, I follow why jigsaw would do that. I don't know why he would recognize that. Because Aaron was the hero. That's what I've been trying to do the whole entire time. I keep forgetting about that part. (laughs) Um, He is the hero. 
And you know what? He, in some ways, got the worst death of all of them. When you think about it, um, he for just one, he sat got, there and bled to death. So well, bled to death, or even starved to death, depending on what happened to him first. Max Glaze is saying that there was a clue. I don't remember what the clue was, though. Do you, Max? Well, he the potential clue was the fact that he said, you know, he had the shotgun show, and he said, "This is your freedom," mm-hmm. and then he put it into the into the gun. So why did he put, put the shell in backwards? No, what he did is uh, when he was talking to them, he loaded the shotgun shell with uh, pellets and those gunpowder and and the two keys. Yeah, but did he put the shell into the gun backwards? No, if if you're going to, or you can't you can't put it in backwards because the the hammer the hammer, the hammer hits the thing. But but no, I, I would assume that he packed the front part of it too much so it would fire backwards or it's. It's jigsaw and there's no logic to it <laughs> yeah i guess maybe you could plug it right you could plug yeah. the barrel it could have I, i'm not sure how to uh load bullets that would be more of like a fred question and maybe tomorrow when we stream i can ask him there that question how do you, you in there like, so how do you make a shotgun shell shoot backwards how do you how do you shoot yourself in the face with a shotgun pointed the right direction <laughs> well, <laughs> That's a great question. Let's find out. <laughs> Let's go to Google. Let's ask a question. Uh, but yeah, so she dies. Then he mm-hmm. he looks at the shells and sees the keys, and the keys are destroyed, which is another kind of callback to the first movie with the key going down the drain in the very first scene. You know, the destroying the keys or losing the keys kind of being a staple of the series. Right. Um, and then so he just dies. And you, you don't see how he dies. He just sits there turns into mummies and Mm -hmm. they get revealed in the new current timeline with the new jigsaw and the detective and now they have those laser cutters on their head which are the most powerful lasers ever those things when they uh cut off the bucket head in the beginning i was like oh that's definitely coming back there's no reason to make up technology like this just to just for um, using on the for the morticians, it's definitely right. going to come back at some point. Um, and the new saw, the new jigsaw, gets his heads chopped off. Gets his heads. He only has one. Gets his head chopped off. He dies, and you think, oh wow, I guess he wasn't jigsaw. Then, call back to the first movie again. He stands up and still alive. Right, which I saw. From the very beginning. Did you think it was him? Well, no, no, no. Oh, let me rephrase that. When <laughs> the lasers were on and they cut his head and all that blood came out, I was yeah. like, oh, that's not that's not legit. Because if they were lasers, they would cauterize the head and there would be no blood. Just like what happened with the cop when it ultimately happened to him. Yeah. When he got turned into a flower. <laughs> that was pretty awesome. I'm not going to lie. It was, it was, that, was decent. A, that was really good. Yeah. Yeah. I was I was thinking that he looked more like the bad guy from uh, Stranger Things. Yeah, like maybe we'll find out that that the uh, what was what was the bad guy called? What do they call him? The Demigorgon. Yeah, the Demigorgon. Maybe we're going to find out that the cop from <clears throat> Jigsaw was the Demigorgon the entire time. So Max Glaze wants to know how you think Batman would do in a saw trap. I think Batman would do stuck in a jigsaw game. Um, I would think that Bruce would be able to outsmart jigsaw without a problem. Now well, with who, who's you, more diabolic though, what? Joker or jigsaw? Cause I feel like the Joker puts Batman in jigsaw traps or the equivalent to a jigsaw trap as often uh, as he I, can. I don't think the Joker is as well thought out as jigsaw. So I think that uh, it would probably take a little bit more time uh, however, you know, in a scenario where uh, you have to cut yourself to, you know, put blood on the ground, you know, he would he would have to take damage there. Yeah. Um, I don't think that. Uh, I think he probably would have stabbed the girl. So I'm thinking that Batman was the role of of, of Aaron. Just he wouldn't have stepped onto the. <laughs> yeah, he wouldn't have he gone wouldn't, out the no exit door. Yeah, he, he would have said, "Nope, not going out there." So like the game would have ended right there in the middle <laughs> because they wouldn't have gone anywhere. You wouldn't, have, you wouldn't go in the silo. You wouldn't have tried to go out the back door. So like they just would have, you know, stuck there. 
Jigsaw, maybe Jigsaw's the baby of the Riddler and the Joker. Ooh, yeah. Because the Riddler definitely likes the game aspect, but I feel like the Joker is more sinister. Right. Um, however, though, however, though, the uh, Jigsaw would have to know intimate details about Bruce to make a game revolved around Bruce. So, um, like, what would he even put Bruce in there for? There would be a, there'd have to be something morality, something Bruce did that was immoral for Jigsaw to stick him into a device or into an actual game. Yeah, I mean, money. Money always seems to be an issue with people. You're so rich and got them so bad. How dare you? You just sit by and watch all these people die. I feel like Jigsaw could get, could force, yeah, for some all reason on a Bruce. Jigsaw that has been always around people doing really awful things to one another or to, you know, murder people. Most of the time, but not always. I can't, yeah. you know, it's like, especially in this one, a lot of these things were uh, pretty soft. Like, no, they all dealt with somebody getting killed. Uh, again, I, th- I still think I the, the drunk guy on the car, while a terrible accident, it was more of an accident than anything else. I don't know. Uh, three people dying is huge. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, it's anybody sad, can get But should he be for murdered that? for it? Should he be well, maimed? He, he, have his leg chopped did. off? He doesn't seem like he learned from his experience at all. He seemed like he was a big D bag. Uh, from the you know, as soon as the 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 helmets came off, seemed like a pretty big D bag from that point. Yeah. Well, he if was I, a jerk. If, yeah. If I if I was responsible for three people's death, like I would spend my entire life trying to like mentally uh, repent myself by serving humanity, not becoming a huge D bag. <laughs> I don't you know. know. I mean, if you watched your best friends die, that would be pretty rough to recover from. You might just kind of shut down and be like, I don't want to be close to anyone ever again. That could be a way you go as well. But, uh, yeah, so the new Jigsaw. Well, one of the things about about the, the Saw movies in general, and this yeah. one, one did the, something similar, was there was no, like, I felt, I always feel like with these movies, they just end. They don't, they don't try and give you, um, not that I want something final, but it just seems like the movie ends in the middle of its ending, you yeah. know? Yeah. So like dudes in the, dude, dudes in the hospital bed kind of <laughs> got away with it. And then again, <laughs> well, it's, it's to leave you uneasy about, uh, Jigsaw still out there. No one can stop them. Things are still. Even if even if Jigsaw's dead, even if his throat just got slit open, bad things are still going on. There's no uh, no stopping it. This train is moving. Right. This is the Snowpiercer train. <laughs> still haven't seen that movie though. No, it's all right. No, I heard it was bad. I heard it was really bad. It's not bad. It's weird. It's mm. so it depends on how you feel about weird. Depending on if it's a good weird, you know. Do you think Jigsaw more so wants these people dead considering his games are based on complex puzzles like some of the people aren't very educated and they're under high stress? Sorry, I don't... Let me try that again. Do you think Jigsaw more... Like, it's a low chance they make it out. Yeah, I think he... So, I think Jigsaw... the So, the story, the lore of the franchise is Jigsaw wants to rehab these people. And right. then the new Jigsaw people, the people who kind of take over his mantle, don't want to do that. They just want to get revenge. And so they make things that people can't get out of where Jigsaw is more trying to help them if they're willing to sacrifice themselves. But right. I, I, yeah, I don't know. I, I like Jigsaw always is kind of uh, acts like it's all for the better of people it's like the the, this needs to happen to fix you but he how do you get to that point where you're just like yeah i'll watch these people die i'm fine with that i'll watch these people chop themselves up i think it's more of like a he believes in purification through pain Mm -hmm. so uh, you know if they do the right thing you know right thing and and inflict pain upon themselves enough then they will reach the point where jigsaw is saying, okay, you have done enough to where you can make it out alive. Yeah. 
I just, but I mean, if, if I remember correctly, there was only what one or two people that made it out. Yeah, I know the girl did, mm-hmm. and, then, and then she ended up getting what killed in like season or not season a movie three or four when yeah. she didn't do what she was supposed to do. Yeah, she she made it out. Donnie Wahlberg's son made it out. Um, Donnie Wahlberg made it out at one point. Um, he didn't make it out. The he he did make it out of one trap only to get caught again. Um, he had he had one of the best worst worst deaths ever. The ice the giant ice yeah. cubes. <laughs> he did you don't feel it. It's just you're dead. The uh surgeon surgeon made it out from the first movie. He chopped his leg off and crawled away. He comes back and saw three D. Oh yeah, you're right. You're right. He did make it out. I forgot about that dude. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, who else? The guy from this one, he gets saved by Jigsaw, makes it out. But uh, yeah, most people don't make it out. We we've talked about the traps. So Max Glaze asked if we've talked about our favorite saw traps. We talked about the traps from this one, which we both kind of agree are lesser of all right. the traps. I think the the one that I've always found not is maybe not be. It may not be my favorite one, but the most compelling or the most like thought provoking one is the one where the guy has to kill four people with a shotgun. He has to choose two people to save. He's got six coworkers on the carousel and he has to push a button to save or to kill. And they're all just screaming at him, like, you know, telling him about how they're friends and like, don't, don't sacrifice me, you know? And it's just like, so like such a strong moment. It's in uh, three, I want to say. Do you know what I'm talking about? Uh, I'm not going to lie. There's not a lot of Saul traps that I remember. I remember yeah. the story more than I do the traps. Yeah, yeah. I want to say it's in three. When they're, all his coworkers are on the carousel, and he has to decide to save or kill, which I'm trying to remember if that was a jigsaw trap or if that was one of his underlings traps because it's a weird he i would that based off what you said to me or said to us just now i would assume that that's not a jigsaw trap because yeah. his intent is to purify and not have other people kill other people yeah because there's also the girl who she's in the cooler in that movie where the water's spraying on her and it's freezing her turning her into ice cube um yeah. but I, I can't remember which movie that is exactly uh, off the top of my head, I'm not going to lie. I'm going to bring it back up again. My favorite one because it made me cringe because none of these, none of the, none of the other traps made me actually be like, oh, yeah. was the one where a girl got thrown into the pit of yeah, needles. Yeah. yeah. And she, and she's and like screaming and, and just raking through the needles to find the key. That was probably the, the worst slash best one because I actually remember it. Yeah. I'm trying to remember what the time frame for that one was though. Cause they had, she, they only had like a minute and no one wanted to go in there and the timer started counting down. So the big guy threw her in there and then she started yeah. just going and she's, crazy. And she's the one, and she's the one that actually made it out. Yeah. Like she's the survivor. Yeah, well, she's she, the survivor. She, she was the survivor from the first one, but she was working with Jigsaw at this yeah. point. So uh, she was working with Jigsaw. Everything's going to be fine. And then she gets thrown into <laughs> She gets thrown into a pit of needles. Yeah. But the um the jaw trap from the first one that she was in was always, I thought, oh, yeah. a really good one. Until I didn't really it kind of lost its uh uh effect when they actually used it in the third one or something like that. They finally used it to show what it would be like and it just snapped the head off. I was kinda like, oh, yeah. that's not not nearly as interesting now. The not knowing what it would do was always more more interesting to me than actually seeing it but yeah like one of the like i'm 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 in google images and i'm going through and i'm just typing in saw two saw three just to see if i could see any sort of um just any sort of traps or mm-hmm. anything like that to maybe jog my memory but yeah like i said i'm more of a um i remember the story more than i do remember the traps as yeah. far as like how, how it consistently compounded on top of each other yeah which was great but uh, yeah, so Jigsaw, I mean, that kind of covered the whole thing, I think. Is there anything we else? We covered about? it from the beginning to the end. Yeah. 
Anything else? Anything else stand out to you about it? The the cop stuff, the procedural stuff, that always is yeah. kind of eh, it's, it's 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 in there to yeah to drive the story, but it's not really interesting at all. It's all about the traps, and uh, yeah, I, I for me overall, I would say that this is probably lower middle of the pack as far as the Shaw Saul universe is mm-hmm. concerned. Just because you know, like I said earlier, be, like the 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 story and the twist and all that stuff has become so formulaic that, like I said, I I didn't I couldn't tell you who Jigsaw was, but I could I could just tell right off the bat that oh, there's two storylines going on yeah. because I just you know so it has to be yeah. yeah so I knew that uh, once they once they pointed out that Dodd or whatever his name was Dodd from Memento mm. was the bad guy I knew that he wasn't going to be the bad guy because just it's so formulaic that you knew it wasn't him. Yeah. Yeah. It, uh, it, it, this one is, it's not the worst. It's definitely not the best. It's, it's right in the middle. Right. Um, it was, it was fun to watch. It was fun to come back to. I haven't watched saw and I don't even know how long, six, seven years since the, I'd say it would have to be what? 2000. Was it seven? I'm sorry. Not 2007, 2010? 2010. Yeah. So sometime around there, 2011, yeah. 2012 is probably the last time I've seen any of the saw movies. So it was, uh, yeah. it was fun to come back to fun to talk about, but, uh, I'll probably never watch it again. I can't imagine. Yeah. Unless I've never watched a saw movie more than once. I've seen just because it's not one of those movies. It's not one of those movies that you just want to sit down and be like, let's watch people get ripped to pieces. Yeah, it's fun to watch with people. It's fun to like put on for someone who's never seen it and be like, yeah. oh, you're going to experience this. But uh, <laughs> just for like enjoyment, it's not uh, not on the top of my list. But uh, yeah. So, yeah, we're not going to be friends because you may watch this movie. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so again, Aaron is on the Fire Resistant podcast over on Twitch. Find him on YouTube, on Twitter. You guys should go check them out, follow them, leave them likes, thumbs ups, whatever your social platform does, do that for them. Right. And uh, we, no, well, not me and Aaron, me and Taylor should be back uh, next week. He's, uh, no, you're not going to have Taylor ever back again. I hope not. It's been my no, goal. We've been doing this for two soon, years now. I've been trying to get rid of As soon as you replace, as soon as you replace Taylor's name with Fire Is It Them Podcast and you hear, uh, was it Alan and Fire Resistant Podcast always disagree? I'm like, oh yeah, we do always disagree. <laughs> so we have to get rid of. I don't know, man. Take- Me and you agreed a lot more than I think you thought we were going to. Were you talking about with Jigsaw? Yeah, with Jigsaw. Oh uh, well, that's and with because the trailers. We, we well, that's because like it's hard because I make good points. It was awful. It was awful. But I mean, like Jigsaw I make, wasn't a good movie. I make like, solid points. And it's like, hard to disagree with. Yeah, I guess if you want to look at it from that perspective. See, the, if I remember, if I remember correctly, I think most of this podcast was me saying something, and you're like, "Oh yeah, Aaron, that's yeah, so awesome." Yeah. I was about to make the same point. <laughs> See, what happened with Taylor is we used to always disagree, but that was because he only watched like ten movies over and over and yeah. over, and so he didn't have a wide selection of things to choose from. And uh, once now that he's watched, I think we've done over two hundred episodes. He's watching Dang. an additional 200 movies on top of his original 10. He's got a much better range uh, to compare things to. So what you should do is go to like um, Rotten Tomatoes and then pick a divisive movie and watch it and see if you can disagree. Well, that's that's Spider-Man 2. We've been talking about doing it forever. He loves Spider-Man 2. I What's wrong with not, Spider-Man 2? Do not like Spider-Man 2. <laughs> Why you don't like good movies? Yep, mostly. That's what it is. You don't like movies with the number two in it. You don't I like hate X number two. Twos. You don't like Spider Man two. I want, I see where this is going. You probably don't like Blade two either. I can't. I, I can't even remember Blade two. Blade Trinity is the only good one. Ryan Reynolds with no, the shirt you off. Did not just say that. You're a liar. You didn't. You did not mean that. You did not mean that. Did oh, you really man. mean that? Ryan Reynolds is the best part of Blade. I have to know. Are you kidding? Was Blade? Did you really think that Blade Trinity was a good movie? Uh, I know. I don't think any of them are good movies. Oh. That's not what I said. Okay. But, but of the think- three, of the three, Blade Trinity is the most fun. Oh my gosh! Oh <laughs> no! <laughs> I'm ha- I'm having trouble here. 
Blade one and two take themselves way too serious. Blade Trinity is just like, you know what? This is crazy. Let's just, let's go nuts. And that's what they did. Well, the thing about it though, is blade at the time, you have to look at the time when blade came out, there was like blade is responsible. When you look at it in the timeline of all the superhero movies that came out, blade is the reason why we have what we have now. No, I mean, it was like, it was a hard, Spider-Man's no, a reason. It, yes. it, was a, it, was a, it was a hard R superhero movie that made a lot of money. Spider-Man Blade, is the reason we have what we have now. Look up the timeline. What movie came out first? Well, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it does. No. Someone, made, someone, Spi- someone made a look, comic book movie look at and it was to- Tonally, tonally look at the movies now. <laughs> what are they closer to? Spider-Man 1 or Blade? No, it has nothing to do with that. It has it does. to do They're with copying people. Spider-Man. It's it's having it's people saying, you know what? Now we have the confidence to make a superhero movie. Look at look at what New Line did How over there. They made this superhero you, movie. It was rated R, and it made a ton of money. So let's make Spider-Man. Max Glay says that he enjoyed Blade Two the most, which he's yeah, just, Blade Two. He's Australian, Blade II, yeah. and so he's wrong. No, his opinion. No, Max. Is invalid. Max, you're correct because <laughs> Blade Two. Um, took everything that was great about the first one and then added a whole a lot more humor and i think that's probably where you're missing it is maybe you don't remember how much humor maybe the not. second blade movie has i mean there's a there's a lot of humor in there because you know he goes from murdering vampires to having to team up with them because of um what were they called i think they were called reapers reaper vampires that were going around eating normal vampires yeah yeah i don't i don't remember the blade movies like super well I haven't seen them for a long time. I do remember enjoying Blade Trinity more than the other two. But to That's say that to but. say that Blade is the reason why we have the movies we have now is crazy. It is all on Spider Man one. Is it though? Okay, are what we movie are, 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 are we gonna attribute it to Batman and Robin too? That definitely no, didn't help. That came out Batman, before Blade. Because Batman and Robin killed the superhero what about genre. Superman, they brought it back. Superman with um uh, Christopher Reeves. Are we counting that? Yeah. That, those yeah. came out first. Yeah. And then Batman and Robin killed the genre. <laughs> the genre went the genre went silent until Blade came out. If it was if it was because of Blade, if Blade was the reason why superhero movies became popular, they would all be in that style. They would all be dark and gritty and you know, violent. And they're not. They, they looked they looked at Blade and they said, "Hey, New Line made a superhero movie that made a lot of money. You know what we can do? We can make a superhero movie that's more for a broader audience and make even more money off no. of it. And that's what they did. Anyways, the best superhero movie of all time is Blank Man. And that's the reason why we have super. I, I, I disagree. Now. It's got to it's got to be Meteor Man. Meteor Man. I don't know if I've ever seen that, but Blank Man Holy is crap. one of the best. Well, look up Meteor Man. It's in the same. It's all part of the. Uh, um, what was the name of that show? Color, color me back. What was the name of that show? Oh yeah, uh, in, in Living Color. In Living Color, yeah, yeah. Uh, Max so, says that the special effects got a big upgrade in the second Blade movie compared to the first. It's true, they did. So let me let me just break this down for you. Blade Google, came out. Google Ryan Reynolds Blade. abs in Blade Trinity, and you'll change your mind. No, I remember the movie. I remember how vomitous the movie was. <laughs> it had Triple H in it. And he was still Triple H from the WWE when he was in this movie. There was not, there was no difference between his character in the ring and his character in the movie, other than he took an arrow to the eye. So um, remember when see, I was Blade, saying Blade? everyone from Australia has good opinions and are always right? Max Glaze uh-huh. just said Spider Man is the reason we have superheroes, superhero movies so, now. So Blade came out in 1998. Okay. Uh huh. Spider-Man came out in 2002. Yeah. So they saw Blade and they were like, holy crap, let's make Spider-Man because if Blade can make a lot of money, if Blade can make a lot of money, Spider-Man is going to make a lot more. No, I disagree. What about Spawn? Spawn came out before Blade. How can we not attribute it to that? When did Spawn come out? That was like 94. I think it was 97. So it came out a year before fine spawn made a movie 
<laughs> That's Spawn the thing. Black Marvel. Panther. Black Panther gets way too much credit for being the first black superhero. You got Blade. You got Spawn. Oh, you got Blink Man. It's not fair. Wesley Snipes is like, uh, I guess Blade didn't happen because if it wasn't for me, <laughs> even Wesley Snipes jokingly says that if it wasn't for Blade, then then Spider Man would have never been made. Oh no, that's crazy. And and look at this, look at this. They're completely two different months, movies. Two months before Spider Man comes out in the theaters, here comes Blade Two. So Blade Two even paid the way for Spider Man to come out in theaters. Blade Two got people riled up for Spider Man. So if Blade Two doesn't come out, what three or four months before Spider Man, it probably doesn't make that kind of money. Michael J. White is awesome in Spawn, Max. He's great. <laughs> I can't wait for the new Spawn movie. Are they making a new one? I knew they yeah, were talking Spawn. about a series. Are they did a series a little while ago, but I never watched it. Uh, I wouldn't say it was a little while ago. It was a long time ago. Was it? It was a HBO. It was an HBO yeah. cartoon. Yeah, it was oh, a long it was a cartoon? time ago. I thought they did a live action yeah. one. No. No, it was a cartoon. It was pretty hardcore. It was on HBO. Well, I've since living in Thailand for eight years, everything is a little while ago to me. Like my life when I mm-hmm. left is pretty much a yesterday, and like this is mm-hmm. a new life. So I have a hard time keeping track of what happened when it happened. Right. Hey, you know what? I I have the same problem, but I call instead of calling Thailand, I call it marriage. Mm. So like things that those I think are that pretty much happened, the same thing for me. <laughs> yeah. 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 So for me, like I'll say, man, that you know that happened like ten years ago, and then my brain's like, you've been married for fourteen years. So no, it happened fifteen years ago. <laughs> but uh, so I, I think we can all agree, Spider Man is the reason why we have all the superhero movies. I would say Blade is is where we're at, bro. It's crazy, Sorry. man. It's crazy. Uh, Jigsaw is an okay movie, not great, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it's fun if you've seen the others. I wouldn't say yeah. go out and watch the others to watch Jigsaw. That's that would be crazy. But if you've yeah, seen was, the others, it's definitely worth watching. Right. But uh, yeah, I think that's it. Any unless okay. there's anything else, go check out Fire yeah, Resistant Podcast. If you don't, if you don't mind me saying something real quick, yeah. I want to thank I want to thank you oh. and I want to thank Taylor for letting me come on come on your podcast. I know it's something that that belongs to you and Taylor, and I listen to your podcast. I enjoy it. And I really appreciate the time that you let me come on here and have some fun with you. Well, you are not welcome, sir. Dang it. Oh, look, <laughs> yeah. the Super Shadow. Thanks a lot, Shadow. Thanks for the support yeah, there. Showed up. This guy. Yeah. He says, I'm too late. Yeah, we're wrapping up. I think he's let been sp- waiting. He's been waiting let me for spoil us. To- <laughs> well, let's ask Shadow real quick. I mean, if you want to stop the if you want to stop the audio portion of this, we can at least ask Super Shadow to see what his let's see. His uh his idea of it is. Or not his idea of it is, but what does he think made the superhero genre? Was it Blade that came out in nineteen ninety eight? Wait, don't and had a don't goal? prime him. Just ask the question. Well, I, I, Let's see what his answer. That. No, you're trying to prime him because you know <laughs> your idea is wrong. You're trying to feed him the answer that you want. All right. What? All right. So Super so Shadow. Shadow. Which Go ahead, your- which movie would you attribute all the superhero movies to now? Which was kind of the the starting point? Of what we have now, if you're still here, he probably just is popped in and said, "I'm too late." When I was Spider Man, or is it Blade? But now you're but you have, you're priming but you him to, again. But you have to give him the truth. No, you don't give him the truth. He answers what his opinion is when he says Spider Man right. one. You'll realize how wrong you are. Well, you, now you're priming him. So now that's why I have to say <laughs> that Blade came out in 1998. Spider Man came out in 2002. Yeah, but that when doesn't. Blade I know. See, Max, he's cheating over here. <laughs> it's not private when you were like, he's going to say when he says Spider-Man one, you're going to know he, I was right because Spider-Man's I'm, the right answer. I'm just saying that you keep, when you look you at keep it, overlooking all the Superman movies, all the Batman movies. No, 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 no. Those, those, Spawn. Those, those superhero genre movies were for like the late eighties, early nineties. And when Batman and Robin came out, it actually killed the genre. Yeah. And it, but, and it took, uh, and it took <laughs> Howard the Duck. True, true statement. I'll, I'll, I agree with Super Shadow. But uh, yeah, I would, I would agree with you that Batman and Robin killed it. Or was yes. it Batman and Robin, or is it Batman Forever? I think it's no, Batman, no, Batman and Robin. It was Batman and Robin because that was, yeah. I still haven't seen the ending to that movie. Um, but 
Blade is not what got it going again. Blade is, oh, yeah, did. is something separate. Fantastic Four. Fant- I would give it Fantastic Four <laughs> over Blade. No, nah, that's not a true statement. He's talking about the, the Fantastic Four oh, from the, 1994 yeah, that, yeah. that was released. That yeah, the other Fantastic Four with uh, well, the if, guy from the if Shield. He's, if he's gonna mess around, then he's got to go with Superman Lives, the Nicolas Cage movie. <laughs> that never came out played, though. It doesn't matter. It's just pictures. neither did the Fantastic Four. Spider Man One, Spider Man One is what did it. That's what. That's the reason we have Marvel I'm, now. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it's the first real Marvel movie that was made, and then studio, Sony Studio was like, you know what, we can do this. Let's make Spider Man. And by the time that they pumped out Spider-Man Blade 2, it come out two months prior to it. It's so separate. <laughs> <laughs> Super Shadow still hasn't even. It was Daredevil. Daredevil. Ben Affleck. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, that's what I wanted to ask you, Max. Which Batman is in the jigsaw trap? Because Ben Affleck Batman is not getting out. Yes, he is. He is so tired. He's just like he just done. Like- he might put himself oh. in the trap. <laughs> yeah, but he's a seasoned Batman who who has been and seen it all, so Not, he would be the one that would just, get it out. Justice League Ben Affleck would throw himself into that Blintech blender. Well, yeah, that's Justice League Ben Affleck. I have to, okay, let me rephrase that. Batman versus Superman Ben Affleck would have gotten out of the traps without a problem. Thanks for the follow, Shadow. Uh, Batman versus Superman. He... He was a different Batman than the Justice League Batman. He would kill everyone. And get out. Yeah, good. That's <laughs> Batman. <laughs> all right. Well, so a jigsaw puzzle from all the Batman. So we know that we know that Adam West would die. We know yeah. that Michael Keaton would die. Yeah. We know that Val Kilmer would die. We know that George Clooney would die, and we know that Christian Bale would die. So, like, the only Batman that would have a chance to get out of it would be Affleck Batman. I don't know if I would say Christian Bale would die. I mean, he got out of that pit. You love Dark Knight Rises. He spent three movies being outsmarted by everybody. <laughs> there was never a point where he was ever in control, ever. So Shadow says, I'd lean more in the Spider-Man. That was Sony trying to create an actual like trilogy and create some kind of spinoff. Blade set the tone. No, it didn't set the tone. I was yeah. with, I was with you so, he- so far, Shadow, almost to the end. Good job, Shadow. Yes, so they didn't Kevin Conroy Batman would get out of the traps. The tone I, is I, so I, different between Blade and Spider Man. It's the not tone even is different, but not what even I'm the same. About. Same. Uh, it's not the same sport. You're talking about baseball and football. You no, know, no, it's no. What I'm saying is, Blade gave the studios the confidence to see that a superhero done correctly can make a lot of money, which ultimately started the superhero genre off yeah because blade a pg-13 blade would never work a pg blade would never work so why rated R why did it take so work. long for us to get logan a rated r superhero movie again if blade was a reason uh because studios became because in love with wasn't. the money that they were <laughs> it they wasn't were about blade huh because it, it wasn't about blade it was about spider-man spider-man's what well, we, we had rolling. several we had several comic book rated R movies between between Blade and and Logan. Which ones? We had the we had the Watchmen. We had Watchmen. even though even though the second Sin City wasn't very good at all, both Sin Cities were done. Uh, the Three Hundred was done. Um, what was it? Road to Perdition was done, and that was rated R. Um, I'm trying to think. Was there any other rated R comic book movies that were out there? I don't know if I would count graphic novels as a comic book movie, though. Well, the only reason that they exist is on in comic book form. I don't think that there is a, I don't think there is a a novel to, novelization of the three hundred or of Road to Perdition. I think it's or all Watchmen. on. But they're so different than like the serialized comic books. Like it's such a different, such a different thing. You know no, saying? I understand. I understand. I understand it, but again, like uh, they, they exist in the genre that they are. They they can't. There's nothing we can do about it. They exist in the comic book shelf. Yeah, like, but you don't want, I'm just but, saying to compare the movies. I don't know if to say that oh, we've had a lot of comic book art rated R comic book movies. I don't know if that would be 
they're they're so different in graphic novel versus comic books. You know what I'm saying? Like having having 300 having uh, Sin City, I don't feel like encouraged or discouraged the comic book movies to be R rated or not. Well, they made a ton of money though. Yeah, no, for sure. The first one, not the second Sin City. But they're because of the the style they were. Not because right. they're R-rated. They're so stylized that people were interested. But I'm just saying that those were comic book movies that were rated R that the studios took a chance on and did it. I mean, the biggest chance that they took was potentially The Watchmen because it was so crazy and ambitious. Yeah. Um, Max Glaze says Kevin Conroy Batman, which is the animated yeah. series. He would yeah, definitely get out all of them. I, I agree. He would, I agree. He would be the best. Kevin Kevin Conroy in the in the realm of Batman like he's probably the best Batman ever. Like as far as just Batman in general, his he's presence, probably yeah. the best. Yeah, he was probably number one, and um, I would have to say, and I know you're going to disagree with me, but it has to be a toss up between Ben Affleck's uh, Batman versus Superman version and um, Did you ever see Batman Brave and the Bold? No. Fantastic series, so good. It would, I forget who voiced it, uh, but the guy that voiced Batman and Batman Brave and the Bold was really great. If you haven't watched it, you should watch it with your kids. It's really, it's really, really good. Yeah, they're all about Spider Man right now. I watch Homecoming almost every other day. Do you? Yeah, my kids do. Yeah. That's oh, all. I'm sorry, I misunderstood. Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> you know what's funny? Here's something that'll make you. His name is uh, Dietrich Bader. Dietrich Bader. If you've seen his face, you'll know who he is. He's been in a ton of stuff. Uh, but uh, my son, my oldest son, Brett, uh, when Spider-Man came out on on uh, DVD, yeah, the um, the menu system, uh-huh. like when when it when the when the DVD would actually boot up, and it, it, you were in the menu system, it was just Spider-Man swinging through the city in a 15 to 20 second loop, right? It was just him just constantly swinging through the city. My son would sit there for hours watching that. <laughs> Spider-Man was like the greatest babysitter of all time for me. <laughs> Cause he would just sit there and just be mesmerized by yeah. Spider-Man swinging through the city. And uh, so, yes, my youngest only wants to listen to the sunflower by post Malone from the mm-hmm. into the spider verse, the one where you can't understand. And she just goes, right. eh, with it the whole time it's so funny but, hey man uh, i just i just saw into the spider verse a couple days ago really good yeah, it was it was it was really good it was uh, really really good. it was frustrating seeing that after having seen aquaman and why because aquaman the cgi is so distracting because the story sucks then you go mm-hmm. and see into the spider verse and then you forget you're watching an animated film which should stand out the entire time, but it doesn't because the story is so good. Mm. Aquaman. I never is forgot. I never forgot. Garbage. Was, yeah, was watching an animated movie. You want to know why? Because Kingpin looked like a boat. <laughs> Kingpin. The the <laughs> the villains were kind of goofy looking, <laughs> but the, the Kingpin was <clears throat> so weirdly drawn. I didn't understand it at all. Yeah. I also but was confused that, by the Green Goblin. I don't know. I don't know the comics well enough, but I always thought Harry Osborn was a person consistently i didn't think he was he ever was an actual I think goblin he knew you know everything happens to everybody in comic books so i'm yeah. sure at one point uh, i couldn't tell you yes or no but maybe at one point he actually morphed into a goblin looking huge monster who knows yeah well i've got to get going but i do they appreciate don't. We're not forever <laughs> i do appreciate you coming on it's a lot of fun <laughs> yeah. definitely have you back on sometime to uh fight more and you can agree with me more but uh yeah so max said kingpin was way too big but everything else was rad i yeah and i love that movie. Agreed. Uh, max also agreed about brave and the bold too it's from the ultimate spider-man it's the one mm-hmm. that okay. kills spider-man and then miles takes up the mantle okay so so that green goblin is the one that actually kills him in the ultimate universe then okay that makes sense i've never read any spider-man ultimate at all the keeping up with the Marvel, the DC comics is so exhausting. Just the idea of it, because there's so many different offshoots and so many different tie-ins, yeah. and like you have to, it's like thirty books a month just to yeah. stay up to date. Plus the entire back catalog of 
just to understand everything. It's crazy to me, the people who know everything about it. Uh, in the comics, Osborne takes a potion that creates him into a beast-like goblin. Gotcha. Well, see, you guys are young enough, and I know you're trying to go, but you guys are young enough, I think, that when the Ultimate Universe was created, I think you were, you guys were kind of right in the hot spot. So, like, when the Ultimates came out, I was like, I don't need to worry about the Ultimates. And um, But I do remember when they killed Peter Parker in the Ultimate. I actually have that. I think I have that issue where Miles Morales shows up at the very end. Mm. Um, but, but yeah, yeah, I think you guys were spot on right at right age for it because you and the super shadow i think are similar age right yeah shadow's like 12 i think and i'm 30 so <laughs> 12 and 30 yeah. yeah we're almost we're almost the same generation yeah but, so uh, yeah man but right, again thanks for coming on i gotta yeah, go for like me. i said my wife's got to teach english class here in a few minutes but uh 12 and a half sorry yeah that <laughs> i always forget how important that half year is to to the youngins so uh, you don't want to forget that but uh yeah sure. so fall fire resistant me and taylor should be back next week he's got some stuff going on to where he's had to take a couple weeks off but uh we should be getting back at it soon and uh thanks for hanging out i seen that